Let me so far from last Sunday's message. Amen. <laughs> are you still praying for your enemies? What are you praying for your enemies for? You you're praying that they'll get run over by a truck? <laughs> it's hard to love your enemies, right? But the Lord commanded us to love our enemies. So today's uh, message is about what Jesus, the words of Jesus, Father, for forgive them. Um, Luke chapter 23, verse 34. This is when Jesus was on the cross. It says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Let us pray. Father God, we are standing here in your presence with a very limited understanding of what forgiveness, true forgiveness is all about. Lord, I pray that as we listen to this word, to this message today, we'll open up our understanding more of what true forgiveness is all about. Lord, I know it's hard to forgive, but you have commanded us to forgive. So I pray for your Holy Spirit to be the one to speak to us today, to convict us and change us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'll be drinking a lot of water today, okay? So that's why, that's why I'm using the, uh, the handheld microphone so that... If I cough, I don't have to cough on my microphone, so. Okay. So I'd like to start with today's message with uh, something about the Filipino culture. So if you do not know about Filipino culture, uh, consider this a educational moment. <laughs> um the culture that I'm, I'm going to talk about is the Pasalubong. Yeah. yeah. Everybody know what Pasalubong is? How many of, you, how many of us like Pasalubong? Yeah. You know, we, we all love Pasalubong. We, we like uh, uh, Pasalubong. And I do not know. I, sometimes I, I don't like it. Especially have to carry the boxes. <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes when, uh, when I go to San Francisco uh, airport and then you see all this line. Go, I mean, you don't even have to ask where the Philippine Airlines counter is. All you have to do is look for people with big boxes, right? <laughs> you know, that's where the Philippine Airlines is. And sometimes I wonder, like, how, how is the planes going to take off? <laughs> With all this, and and sometimes you know we uh, we sacrifice. Uh, sometimes we even go over the the limit, the weight limit that the airline allows. And um, when the last time we were we went to the Philippines, we, I was following this 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 guy that uh, had a lot of pasalubong. You know, we were boarding the plane and. He had a backpack that was bulky, and he had two bags on each hand. It's like, <laughs> this is not allowed, but, you know, we, we sacrifice to bring Pasalubong because we want to make our relatives happy. But let me talk about the negative side of the Pasalubong. <laughs> I heard that some part of the Philippines... Not, not so much where I came from. That the moment you arrive there, your relatives, even those you do not know relatives, are already waiting. Right? They're already waiting for their pasalubong. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I heard some people say that they gain more relatives every time they <laughs> go on vacation. But... um. Uh, another another bad, bad part of that is this, 
Because everybody showed up. You do not have enough pasalubong for everybody. Right? And so, those who receive are disappointed. They're not happy with what they get. I mean, my, my sister told me when uh, she went to the Philippines that one of our grand nephew asked her for a smartphone. <laughs> and then when, they didn't, when she didn't get it, he, he was so disappointed. So, and sometimes they don't even say thank you. Right? <laughs> last April, when we went last April, my brother gave, you know, sent some pasalubong with me to give to the, my nephews there. So I took videos while they were distributing the, the pasalubong. And my brother, after watching, he goes, did you ever even say thank you? So then the, the last time we went, he never gave anything at all. <laughs> But the worst part is this. You end up apologizing. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe next time. We end up apologizing when all our intentions are just to make them happy, but they're not happy. And again, you end up apologizing. That's the bad part of the pasalubong. How many of you have apologized? Because you did not bring enough. Or you did not, uh, not everybody received something from you. We end up apologizing. I like uh, what Nathan told me. Nathan, uh, uh, what's his last name? Kisada. Okay. The last time I saw him, he said, I went to the Philippines, never told nobody. I said, I like that. Maybe next time, maybe next time when I go to the Philippines, never tell nobody. <laughs> so I don't have to bring pasalubong because he, he said, they, they don't appreciate it anyway. Whatever you give, you know, they complain, they're not happy, and you end up apologizing. So he said, I'm, I do not tell nobody when I'm going to the Philippines. But can you imagine, again, all you have is good intention. You have all the good intentions in the world to bring your pasalubong just to make everyone happy, but yet they're not happy, and you end up apologizing. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ had the same experience. Now, Jesus came into this world with good intentions, but he himself uh, had the same experience when people forget to say thank you or they don't appreciate what you give them. Luke chapter 17 is the story of 10 lepers. Okay, remember the story of the 10 lepers? The 10 lepers so, who asked Jesus for healing. You know, when Jesus was passing by, he said, Say, Jesus, son of David. Hey, have mercy on us. And so Jesus healed the ten lepers, but yet only one came back to say thank you. Because, I mean, even just, a, even just a thank you really makes you feel good. But Jesus said, aren't there, weren't there ten lepers that were healed? Why only one return and say thank you? On another occasion, Jesus was casting out demon from a possessed demon possessed man and healed him completely. He opened his eyes and he was able to speak. But the response that the people gave, the people that were watching, that were there, that were present, the response that they gave to what Jesus had done, again, everything was all for good. I mean, who wouldn't say thank you for somebody? Who got healed? But all he got was, oh, he's a son of the devil. That's what he, that's what Jesus got. And so, 
In the opening of his ministry, like Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19, if you can put that up. Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, throughout His ministry, this is exactly what Jesus did set the captives free. Released the press, he brought blessings after blessings to people. He proclaimed the Lord, the, the favor of the Lord during his ministry. And again, throughout his ministry, this is what he did. Just good intentions. Jesus came with the pasalubong. Okay? The pasalubong is he healed people. He, uh, he preached the good news. Uh, he set people free and released the oppressed. Those are the pasalubongs that Jesus brought into this world. But what he got in return was that people rejected him. They accused him of son of the devil. They arrested him. They beat him up and mocked him, nailed him to the cross, and stripped him naked. That's, all what, he, that's what Jesus got in return. They beat him up. He nailed him to the cross, pierced his side, and then stripped him naked instead of being thankful. Can you imagine if you were on Jesus' shoes? All your intentions are good. All you brought are the gifts, the pasalubongs, but yet... What you get in return is rejection. That's what Jesus received instead. But Jesus' response to all this is, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Now, Jesus did not have to do that. It should be the other way around. It should be the people that did him wrong who needed to apologize. From a human perspective, he did not, you know, it did not make sense. Does it make sense from a human perspective, from a human point of view, that you apologize when you did nothing wrong? If all you did was something good? I mean, that is hard to do, right? It's again, it's a, from a human perspective, the best thing that you can do is to retaliate or revenge or you want to get even, right? That's human nature. You want to get even. When somebody hurts you, you want to get even. However, this is not what Jesus did. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and when he said, Father, forgive them, he teaches us something good here when it comes to forgiveness. By the way, apology and forgiveness are two different things. Apology is the expression of regret, remorse for an offensive or injury. Forgiveness is the pardon for something that has been done. Now let me... Let me point out three things here why Jesus, uh, what Jesus did was very difficult. Again, number one, to apologize and to forgive is something that is very difficult to do, especially if you know that you have done nothing wrong. If there is somebody that needs to apologize, it's the people that have done you wrong. Second, he asked for forgiveness while being beaten. The insult, the persecution was ongoing. In other words, Jesus was still hanging on the cross. While he is still being mocked, he say, he asked for forgiveness. Father, forgive them. The human's part or perspective, we always say, before I can forgive, give me some time. Right? 
Before I can forgive, give me some time. I want to heal first. Then I will forgive. So give me some time. Maybe, maybe a year later. Maybe two years later. Then I will forgive. That's the human, from human perspective. Number two, uh, number three. What Jesus did was very difficult because it is a lot easier to forgive your friends, but never it's hard to forgive your enemies. It's it's just hard. However, you know, we, we might say, who cares about my enemy? Let them let them get run over by a truck. But Jesus tells us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. But it's hard. It's hard. But let me give you three reasons why it is necessary and good to forgive. Okay, let, me, let me give you three reasons why it is necessary and it's good to forgive. You ready? Uh, you don't want to listen, right? <laughs> Are you ready to listen to the three things? Why it is necessary to forgive and why it is good. Number one. Forgiveness is a vital aspect in any type of relationship. Let me repeat that. Forgiveness is a vital aspect in any type of relationship. When Jesus announced in Luke chapter 4, then when he said, I came to set the captives free, open the eyes of the blind, I came to give you life and to have it to the fullest. When he announced the good things that he came to do, all of those would have mean would have would mean nothing. All of those would all those promises would make no sense and have taken place without forgiveness. Because remember this we were once an enemy of God. So when he came to announce, I came to bring life and for you to have it to the fullest. None of those promises that he gave, none of the promises that even you can go all the way to the, to the Old Testament, that the promises that God had gave for us, none of those promises would have made sense without forgiveness. Because forgiveness is a vital aspect in any relationship. We were once the enemies of God. We have disobeyed, disobeyed him, broken his laws. It is impossible for us to enjoy for these blessings to flow into our lives. No relationship will grow and prosper without forgiveness. See, when the Bible says we were once an enemy of God, that Jesus died even before we were still his enemies. In other words, God have already forgiven us. So, even if Jesus came and announced all the good intentions, all the pasalubong that he brought with him, none of those would have made sense. None of those would have taken place. We will not be enjoying all the blessings, all the promises of God, all the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not enjoy them without his forgiveness. I mean... Why would, why would he bless us if he didn't forgive? It's a story. <clears throat> we might, again, we say it's, it's, it's hard. There's a story. Uh, <clears throat> pro probably heard me mention this. In 1956, there was uh, five American missionaries that, were, that went to Ecuador. Have you heard about the story? There's a movie uh, made of that. Uh, it's called uh, The End of the Spear. Anyway, there was this um, mountain people or jungle people that have nev never been reached yet. So these five American missionaries attempted to reach to this uh, group of jungle people. On their second attempt, on their second time to go, they landed there 
small plane on the water. But however, they were all killed by their people that they were trying to reach. The widows of these five missionaries had every right to hate the people that killed their husbands. They had every right to hold a grudge and even take revenge. Because the only thing that their husbands did was to bring the good news of salvation to them. But instead they were killed. But instead of hate, they chose to forgive. Instead of counting them as their enemies, they considered them as their missions. That group of people gave their lives to Christ eventually. <coughs> if the widows of those five missionaries did not forgive the killers of their husbands, their husbands death would have been in vain. You know, whatever their husbands did would have been in vain. The death of their husbands would have no meaning at all. But however, because they chose to forgive those people that they were trying to reach who killed their husbands gave their lives to Christ. Can you imagine if they, again, if they chose to hate them, their husbands would have died in vain. So forgiveness is very important because it is vital, it is a vital aspect to any type of relationship. No relationship will grow and prosper without forgiveness. Number one power of forgiveness. Second, forgiveness brings healing. Hatred or anger is a negative energy. It is an energy that can drain you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Hatred cannot only destroy the person it is aimed at, but it also destroys the carrier too. This is because hatred is such a powerful emotion that a person cannot move forward within their lives until the hatred is resolved. Many people are sick. When a person suffers from a depression because of something that happened, somebody hurt them, one of the um, indicators that doctors watch whether a person is suicidal or not is forgiveness. If they have already forgiven, doctors are pretty sure that the person is not suicidal. Because forgiveness brings healing. So when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. Jesus was teaching us something here when it comes to healing. You see, the punishment, whatever that they, they did to the Lord Jesus Christ was still ongoing when he said, Father, forgive them. Jesus did not want any more damage done to the people that hated him. So he asks the father to forgive them. Now let me, let me make it a little easier to understand. When you wake up in the morning, how many of you pray? What do you pray for? Lord, bless my day, right? One of the things that we pray for every morning, Lord, bless my day. Lord, I want to have a good day today. 
But the moment you get into the freeway, some crazy drivers, what did you, what do you do? Come on, get out of the way. You might as well park on the side. I thought you prayed for a good day. You just ruined your day. You know, a lot of people that rides with me, they make a comments like, you're so patient. You know, you don't, you don't say anything about those crazy drivers. I said, I don't even know who are the drivers. Let them be crazy. But here's the secret. Okay, here's the secret. So that you will not have a high blood pressure when you're driving. Make forgiveness your lifestyle. Forgiveness is not only an act. It is a lifestyle. When you have forgiven in your heart before even anything bad happens to you, your blood pressure remains the same. No, you know, you will not stress out. I mean, you will not suffer depression because it brings healing and not only physical healing emotionally and especially spiritually so he forgiveness brings healing make it your lifestyle not just an act third one and I'm almost done Another 30 minutes. Okay, let me drink my water because I'm, my throat is getting dry. We forgive. What's the first one? Forgiveness is a vital aspect for every relationship. Second one, forgiveness brings healing. Not just physically, but emotionally. And spiritually. The third one is that we need to forgive because God commanded us to forgive. There are only two things you can do with a command. What are they? Obey or disobey. That's it. I mean... You know, we parents, when we tell our kids, you know, we tell them to do something, we expect them to obey or disobey. But our kids learn to disobey us. You know why? Because we always count. One. Two. Three. Well, there's nothing. We don't know. <laughs> we don't do nothing, right? <laughs> we just count. And then you count again. One. <laughs> Two. No wonder they don't uh, obey us. <laughs> we don't have to count. Oh, my my mom don't count. He just say, he see, my mom used to say, do this, and then she don't count. She's so quiet, but, you know, we, we don't do it anyway. The next thing you know is that he's got his <laughs> fingernail on your, <laughs> your ear. But again, there's only two things you can do with a command. Obey or disobey. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, if we choose not to forgive anyone who hurt us, let me tell you something. You better not sin anymore. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? You better not sin anymore because then you will not be forgiven. That's, that's what it says. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive you. Wow. That's a command. It's up to us to obey that or disobey. Jesus was asked by his disciples, how many times do I have to forgive? Jesus answered, 70 times seven. Now, I know you, you probably start counting already. It's like, okay, 70 times seven. You know, then you start counting. Then, well, one more. One more, one more mistake, then I'm not going to forgive you. No, what Jesus is saying is that forgive until forgiveness is complete. Okay? Forgive. It's not, easy. it's not easy to forgive. But again, if we really think and do, dig deeper what, what forgiveness can do to us, forgiveness is very powerful. Now, let me... Explain to you what true forgiveness is. Because most of the time, when we forgive, this is basically what we say. I will forgive you, but I will never forget what you have done. Right? I will forgive you, but I will never forget what you have done. Well, in the book of Leviticus, the Lord commanded Moses to do something about forgiveness. Have many of you heard the scapegoat? Okay, scapegoat. The Lord commanded Moses to have two goats. One goat, okay, will be offered as a sacrifice offering for the forgiveness of sin. That is the foreshadowing of the Lord Jesus Christ. The goat then is killed and blood sprinkled for the atonement of sin. True forgiveness can be found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a true forgiveness. Can be found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because we belong to Christ, we should also forgive. The Lord Jesus Christ is the embodiment of what true forgiveness is all about. It is his lifestyle. It is who he is. And that means that because we belong to Christ, then forgiveness should also be our lifestyle. So that's the first goat. The second goat is what the Lord calls the scapegoat. The scapegoat, the, the high priest would lay his hands on the head of the scapegoat. <coughs> what that signifies is that it signifies that the sins of the people are being transferred to the goat, to the scapegoat. What happened next is that they will have somebody who will be put in charge of that scapegoat and that somebody will bring that scapegoat into the wilderness as far as they could bring that goat. Making sure okay, that persons 
job is to make sure that the scapegoat will not return to the camp. And in those days, in the wilderness, there are wild animals. That scapegoat could be attacked by wild animals. What's the message of that? That's the message of the two forgiveness. The message of the two forgiveness is this. You put on the scapegoat all the pain, all the hurt, all the worries, everything that made you sour because of what people have done to you. Put it on the scapegoat and bring it into the wilderness, making sure that it doesn't come back. And even the scapegoat, I said, they could be attacked by wild animals. Let your pain, let your hurt be taken as far as it could be so that it doesn't come back. That is the true forgiveness. The Bible tells us that God is no longer counting our sin against us. Can you imagine if God's still counting our sin against us? There will be no forgiveness. So true forgiveness again is that found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the embodiment of true forgiveness so that we too can have forgiveness as a lifestyle, not just an act. And then the second one, scapegoat, is to bring all your hurts, all your pains, every bad experience that you have. Let it be sent as far as it could be to the wilderness never to return because that's what God have done for us. He is no longer counting our sin against us. That's the essence of true forgiveness. Is it hard to forgive? Yes, it's hard to forgive. But with the help of the Lord, we can forgive. We can love our enemies. We can pray for those who persecute us. We can pray for those who hurt us. Because it is forgiveness is powerful. It brings healing. It is a vital aspect of every relationship and because the Lord commanded us. You see, when the Lord commanded us to forgive, He was not just forcing us. He commanded us to forgive because He knew. God knows that it is good for you and for me. So how many of us can forgive your enemies? <laughs> it is hard. But with the help of the Lord, we can forgive. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, when Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Because Jesus knew what hatred and anger can do to a person. The only way that you know, we, we can be consumed by it, by anger and hatred. The only way that healing can begin to take place is that when we begin to forgive. That's why Jesus did not wait. 
He said he already forgave while he was still hanging on the cross. When the people are still mocking him. He already said, Father, forgive them. Our, our, our way is that, well, give me some time to heal. Then I forgive. No. If you want a healing right now, you forgive. It's not the other way around. The, the other way around is that, give me some time to heal before I forgive. God's way is, I will forgive now so that healing can start to take place. Powerful. Forgiveness is powerful. It can bring healing to anything. Even relationship. That's why the Lord commanded us to forgive. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much. That even while you are still hanging on the cross. When the mockery was still ongoing. When the insult was still ongoing. Lord, you have already forgiven. I know, Lord, it is something that is very difficult from the human perspective. But truly, oh Lord, if we do not forgive, we are the one. We are the one who is going to suffer. We are the one who is going to get sick. We're the one who cannot move on. That's why you said, Father, forgive them. Because you want the healing to take place as soon as possible. You did not wait and say, I will forgive them when I rise up from the dead. But right there and then, you said, Father, forgive them. Because whatever promises that He did, all the good gifts that He brought, every promises from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, all the way to the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, would have make, doesn't make sense without forgiveness. As a matter of fact, we will never enjoy your blessings. We will never enjoy your promises without your forgiveness. The only way that blessings began to flow to us is because of forgiveness. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here, Lord, seeking for healing, because of something that had happened, let the healing begin today. Let the healing begin to take place today by forgiveness. Because true healing can only take place when there is forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Heal. We pray. Heal each one of us, Lord. Give us strength to obey your command because it is for our own good. It is good for our spirit. It's good for us emotionally also, physically. Lord, 
forgive us and help us also to forgive others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand. The worship team leads us in song. I'd like to worship the Lord. taken our sins so far away into the wilderness that we remember them no more. Thank you for the true forgiveness that can be found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. Before I close, is there anybody that needs prayer? the Lord. Thank you for your silence. Father God, we come into your presence. Because Lord, you have commanded us to, to knock and to seek. You are knocking at the door of your throne. Because, Lord, there is a need. There are a lot of needs, oh God, that are presented here today. Lord, whatever those needs are, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, extend your hand of love and touch those hands that are upraised. Lord, bring healing, bring blessings to those who need them. 
We all need your healing and your blessings, especially for those, oh God, who needs healing right now. Lord, if it's a spiritual healing, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, oh God, will bring healing upon that person. Thank you so much for what you have done and what you're going to do. We claim all the answers. And today, oh God, we will move forward free from any grudge, any hatred, but full of love. The love of Christ. Bless every family represented here today. Bless the rest of the week. Lord, bless our Bible studies. Oh God, our outreaches, whatever outreaches we have, oh Lord. Bless them, oh God. And Lord, for those people who we have shared the gospel, Lord, I pray. And Lord, the seed that we have been we have we have planted in the hearts of those people, oh God, will grow. And oh God, there will be harvest of souls. Thank you so much again. This we ask in the matchless name, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. There is a five minutes.